Kurt Frederick Ludwig was born in 1903 in Fremont, Ohio. By 1941, through a set of unusual circumstances, the Joe K. spy ring, of which Ludwig was the leader of, had been captured and prosecuted, with heavy prison sentences being handed down. This is the story of that operation. The Joe K. spy ring operated out of my regular stomping grounds of Ridgewood and Maspeth in Queens as well as in Bushwick in Brooklyn. And we will be walking around these neighbourhoods today as I tell you this story. Though born in America, Ludwig's family had returned to Germany when he was six years old, and that was where he grew up and had later married. He returned to the USA in 1925, but once again he returned to Germany in 1933. In February of 1938, Kurt Ludwig was arrested in Austria for espionage. However, by the time of his trial a month later, Austria had been annexed by Germany and he was set free, where he returned to Germany once more until March of 1940. That was when Ludwig was ordered to return to the USA to establish a spy ring there. Upon arriving in America, Kurt Frederick Ludwig set up his base in a boarding house in Ridgewood, Queens, which is the neighbourhood where the current video footage is from. He became a leather goods salesman and proceeded to recruit agents from the various German-American Bund organisations in the Queens and Brooklyn areas. In total, he had recruited six men and two women for his operation. One of these women was Lucy Bomler, an 18-year-old from the neighbourhood that I currently reside in, Maspeth in Queens. She joined the operation because she thought that it might be fun, and it turned out that she played an important role in the prosecution of the spy ring when she turned government witness. The Joe K. spy ring began their work by scoping out the docks in the New York City and New Jersey areas, along with surveillance of various East Coast Army units and aircraft manufacturing plants. Once the information had been gathered, they were sent via mail to addresses around the world in countries that were neutral during the war. The personal letters appeared harmless enough at first glance, but each one contained hidden messages that had been written in invisible ink. How important was Ludwig and his Ridgewood-based operation to the German cause? Well, two of the direct recipients of these letters from the Joe K. spy ring were addressed to Manuel Alonso and Lothar Frederick. These were the aliases used by Heinrich Himmler, and the head of the Reich Security Main Office, Reinhard Heydrich. It would be fair to assume that the information obtained from the Joe K. spy ring was seen at the highest levels of German leadership. US and UK authorities were aware of a German spy ring that was operating out of New York City, and their first break in the case came when MI6, who were operating out of a hotel in Bermuda, intercepted a letter addressed to Lothar Frederick. British authorities were already aware that Lothar Frederick was an alias used by Heydrich, and as the letter was signed by a Joe K, any subsequent letters that contained the Joe K signature were intercepted and their contents recorded. In March of 1941, chemists working for the British Security Coordination were able to discover the secret writing contained within one of the letters from Joe K. It referred to a duplicate letter sent to a Smith in China. The FBI, working in coordination with the British security team, were able to intercept this Smith letter and found that it contained a plan of the United States defences at Pearl Harbour. It was unknown whether the Smith letter reached its destination in China, or if it had any bearing on the attack on Pearl Harbor. 
Conventional wisdom would suggest that the letter never left the hands of the United States officials, but that information has not been revealed, as far as I am aware of. At this point in the proceedings, neither the British nor the Americans were aware of who operated the Joe K spy ring, and who indeed was a part of that spy ring. But in March of 1941, shortly after the British had deciphered the invisible writing contained within one of the Joe K letters, an unusual occurrence happened in Manhattan that would prove to be the downfall of the spy ring that operated out of Ridgewood, Queens. On March the 18th, 1941, two men were in Times Square in New York attempting to cross the busy road. One of them, a middle-aged man carrying a brown briefcase, started to cross the intersection against the traffic light. A Brooklyn cab driver was heading up 7th Avenue when a man shot out in front of his cab. The driver was unable to avoid the pedestrian and he knocked him under the wheels of another vehicle. The man's companion simply picked up the wounded man's briefcase and fled the scene of the accident, while the man who had been struck would die from his injuries within 24 hours. The fatally struck man was identified as Don Julio Lopez Lido, a courier for the Spanish consulate. However, while the Spanish consulate would bury him, all of Lido's papers were written in German. Lido's companion had contacted the hotel where Lido was staying, asking them to preserve his rented room until further notice. But the hotel management instead contacted the appropriate authorities. A search of the dead man's hotel room and the items found on his person included a German written notebook, <coughs> aviation maps and military surveillance papers. It was shortly after this that Joe Kay had sent another letter in haste, warning the recipient of the letter that a car in New York City had deliberately run down and killed a man by the name of Phil. This was the breakthrough that cracked the case for the FBI and the British security team. The British security coordination informed the FBI that the Phil in question was none other than Captain Ulrich von der Osten of the German Military Intelligence Service, who had entered America via Japan a month earlier. Using the notebook found on the dead man, along with an intercepted cable originating in Portugal, sent by Phil to a recipient with the code name Fousey, as well as letters sent by Joe Kay himself, the FBI were able to identify Kurt Frederick Ludwig as the companion of Captain von der Oosten, who had fled the scene of the accident with his briefcase. One of Ludwig's code names, of course, was Fousey along with the communication name of Joe Kay. The FBI, having determined that Ludwig was the leader of the Joe Kay spy ring, subsequently placed him under surveillance to determine his contacts. Shortly before each member of the ring was identified, Ludwig had travelled to Florida with his secretary in tow, the 18-year-old Lucy Bohmler from Maspeth, Queens. In total, there were 10 members of the spy ring, most of whom were German-born residents of Ridgewood, Queens. Miss Baumler from neighbouring Maspeth had also attended Grover Cleveland High School in Ridgewood. The ninth member of the ring was only identified using the help of a New York janitor. While the FBI were aware of the operative with the code name Robert, they did not know who he was. It was the janitor who worked at the German consulate who provided the FBI with this information. One of the janitor's duties was to take care of the consulate's burn bag by depositing the documents that it contained into the furnace, always under the watchful eye of the Germans. However, 
As soon as the German authorities were out of sight, the janitor would pull the burning documents from the furnace, douse them, and then recover whatever information he could find before handing them over to the FBI. That spy turned out to be none other than Paul Borchardt, a famous German archaeologist who had himself been detained in a German concentration camp due to his Jewish heritage. Out of patriotism, he nonetheless spied for Germany, despite having to flee Germany as a refugee. Kurt Frederick Ludwig was arrested in Washington State on August the 23rd, 1941. Done so as the FBI believed that he was about to depart the USA to head to Germany via Japan. The other members of the ring were also rounded up and arrested, with a couple of them being able to avoid arrest for a short period of time afterwards. Ludwig and two others were sentenced to 20 years in prison, with Ludwig himself serving his time at Alcatraz. Three were sentenced to 15 years, while other sentences were handed down of 12 and 10 years. Lucy Bomler, the 18-year-old who had used her charms to gain information from U.S. soldiers, and who was nicknamed the Maspeth Matahari, received five years in return for her cooperation against the rest of the spy ring. Because the activities of the spy ring took place before the United States had entered World War II, the members of the spy ring were spared execution something that would have almost certainly happened had their activities continued after Pearl Harbor. They were fortunate that they were all arrested some 10 weeks prior to the United States of America entering the Second World War. <laughs>